Hello everyone. Today I will teach you the first and foremost topic of analog and mixed VLSI design. That is need for CMOS and analog VLSI design. So first question comes that why we need analog. As we are surrounded with digital devices everywhere, whether it is our smart TV or whether it is our digital camera, commonly known as DSLR, internet, etc. Then why we still need digital? So let us take an example and understand that why we still need analog. As we all know that we are surrounded by many electronic devices and the main functions which are performed by these electric, electronic devices are sensing and processing. As the RF signal is received by this antenna, the main process is that sensing. First, it sends the received signal. It converts it into digital signal by a analog to digital converter and further this digital signal is processed in digital signal processor. So this sensing require high performance analog design. At, it is the major requirement of any electronic device. Let us take an another example. So here, there are two laptops, laptop one and laptop two, which are connected by a USB cable. This laptop one is sending digital data to the laptop 2 through this USB cable. This USB cable has a finite bandwidth of 100 MB per second. So what it does, it attenuates and distorts the data at higher frequency. So we need an equalizer. Equalizer that is again in an analog domain, which, this, uh, dis which we gain this distorted data. What this equalizer do? It amplifies the data at higher frequency. So this equalizer is again working in an analog domain. So we always need an analog processor or analog design in digital design as well. So at lowest speed, this digital signal process efficiently while at higher speed, the analog domain works better. So we implement the function in the analog domain as well in many electronic devices. So this analog circuits are typically quite a lot, a lot less complex if we compare to it digital circuit. And this ADC, if we compare both of them, if this ADC requires thousand of transistors, if we compare it to a microprocessor, it required billions of transistors. Now, what are the analog design challenges that we are facing in today's technology? So first is the transistor imperfection. As the scaling is done day to day, then the most of the parameters are getting declined like voltage gain. If we compare the voltage gain of the MOS transistor is, decli is declining with this scaling. Next is declining supply voltage. So as the supply voltage declines with this uh, scaling, then if we compare, then in 1970, it is 12 volt and now it is 0 0.9, 0 0.9 volt. So this many of the circuits are discarded due to this declining supply voltage. Next is power consumption. So if we uh, see this power co consumption is the major challenge in designing any CMOS circuit because today it requires low power design. So we are striving for that low power design. Next is circuit complexity. Today, analog circuit requires tens of thousands of tra transistor, which demands long and tedious 
simulation. Then next is PVT variation. PVT variation, what does it mean? Like many of the parameters, supply voltage, ambient temperature, they all are affected and denoted by PVT. There is a specified range which is denoted as PVT variation. So analog design in CMOS technology is a challenging task because device parameter vary significantly across this PVT variation. Now comes integrated. Why we need integrated circuits? Gordon Murray predicted in the early 1970s that the number of transistor per chip has continued to double approximately one and a half year. And at the same time, the at the same time, the minimum dimension of transistor has dropped from about 25 micrometer in 1960 to about 12 nanometer in the year 2015, which resulted in a tremendous improvement in the speed of integrated circuits. Next, why CMOS? Why we still need CMOS? CMOS gate dissipates power only during switching. And it was also discovered that the MOS devices could be scaled down very easily as compared to any other transistor. 